Well, hello there. Jackie Holland here in Sherman, Texas. I'm with Whosoever Will Outreach Ministry, a ministry to hurting people from the jailhouse to the penthouse. We are designated as a church, so we're a church for unchurched people. Maybe you're involved in a church, and, and but you just uh, always can't, you can't get enough of the word or you can't get enough encouragement. Well, you know, I know how you feel. Uh, we need more. We, it's like, I want to hear more of God's word. Because, see, God's word doesn't return void. It always accomplishes what God wants. And I've been going through kind of my, in my own personal reading time, and that's what, how I share with you. And, and, and that's Romans. And Romans 11 is what I'm on today. And, you know, in the Middle East, there's so much toil and there's so much uh, uh, division and there's so much pain and and only God can sort these things out. But he already knows what he's going to do. He knows what he's promised. And he knows how it's going to work out. So I'm not going to get myself all worked up about it. But I will say this. Every day, every day, I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And I pray. It's Psalms 122, 6. And he says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You shall prosper if you love these. So I do pray. And I pray for the leaders. I pray for Netanyahu. I pray for all the people that work with him. I pray for the people that are going through so much and, uh, on all sides and all issues. Because God knows. He knows the hearts. But you know, a lot of people, they bec they're becoming again, again, it seems like, anti-semitic and they're getting uh getting on this kick thinking that the jews are the enemies and jews are not enemies jesus himself was a jew and god started christianity through abraham abraham and so it's like no no there's a there was a covenant that was made and nobody fighting and fussing is going to change it or one way or the other so there's a you know, I, I know God, I, I can only pray God's will and, and him to do things the way he's going to. There's coming a day that when the Lord Jesus is going to come back, he's going to set his feet right back in that place. Not over here in uh, Sherman <laughs> or not in wherever you're living, Timbuktu, <laughs> wherever it is. He's putting his feet down and, and he's walking, he's, he's busting through that eastern gate. And you know what? He and he'll do that when he's when he's ready. And so, uh, whether people are ready or not, Jesus really is. There is a there is a time that he's coming back for his church, and that's the, the believers. The church, you know, is not a building. Buildings can be destroyed and torn down and remodeled and everything else, but. A church, no. We can grow. We can stretch. We can uh, we can be tried and tempted and tested. But we, you know, we are the church, and the church is made up of many parts. Parts like our bodies are made up of many parts. We've got the arms and legs, the ears, the eyes, and all of these parts have a, a reason. If you stump your toe, and you you know you, it's like oh, you scream out. You scream out. It hurts. It hurts really bad. And that's the part that you think, well, you know, everybody doesn't see my toe. But, okay, well, what if it was your kneecap? Well, everybody doesn't see your kneecap. Oh, I hurt my knee, I hurt my knee. Well, the Lord knows. He knows. And all of these parts of our body and these body, this body is made up of so many parts. It's all inside. And I'm experiencing, I know, I've been dealing with this cancer thing, you know, for 10 years. CLL, stage four. And, uh and God knows. And then diverticulitis this last month, my son died uh, on Labor Day this past year. And I can honestly say I have been sick with that, uh, with a gut issue. Well, the guts, that's a very uncomely, unattractive thing to think about, isn't it? But we all have guts and we say, I want you to have guts. And you get, girl, you got guts. Yeah, you do too, guys. <laughs> we all have them. We need to take care of them and not be feeding them a bunch of junk <laughs> that's messing with us and it's going to destroy your body. But I'm going to read read something out of the Word because the Word doesn't return void, and I'm not going to take very long. 
but I, I, I hope you, you'll be blessed by this. I got a letter today and, a, and an offering from uh, dear partners, and it said, we wanted to send you a little something to help you with your online ministry. We are really enjoying your videos on YouTube, and you're uh, putting out some excellent messages. Well, that blessed me. Also, you're looking better and sounding better. We are continuing to pray for you that you get better each day. I thank God for that, don't you? And so, you know, some of you do partner with me and have for years and years, and I appreciate it more than you'll ever know. And you've sustained me. God has, God put that in your heart, and so I didn't. He put it in. He put it in your heart to help me all of these years, and and for this partner. And I thank God for for all of you, and bless bless God for you. I just wanted to say that right up front. But it's very important to me to get this across about Israel, because a lot of people have written off Israel, and they don't. They they don't. Well, some people want to throw it into the sea and destroy Israel. They're not going to do it. God himself said, Israel is the apple of my eye. And so it, it, it's not going to happen. So you could just, you just quit. Go, don't even go there. <laughs> it's not going to happen. You just get over get, getting, getting angry about it because it says, because they, they sinned. They did so many things. And if they try to keep the law, and and even when Jesus would be preaching, well, you know, you know, they did they mad about it. Everything. I mean, there are things that you may not like, but you cannot hate a group of people or any people for that matter because of uh, this thing or that. You just got to let it go and let God let go and let God. That's all I can say. And it's it's talking about the remnant of Israel. That's where we're at now. There's a remnant. And it says, not all is all that say they're of Israel is Israel. See, we've been grafted in. When you become a Christian, you become grafted into a, a wild olive tree. You're grafted in. It's not natural. Not natural. They're natural. They're right there. They've heard the message. They were under the law. They, the Abrahamic covenant and everything else. They, they, they've done it, but they haven't done it because you, we're not under the law anymore. We're under God, the, the new covenant, which Jesus made when he went to the cross, was nailed to the cross and paid the, the price for our sins on that old rugged cross. And he's coming back. He's coming back for a spotless church, a church with without spot or wrinkle. That's what he said. Isn't that a blessing? But he's talking about the remnant of Israel in chapter 11. This is an important chapter for people that think that God has replaced Israel, done away. He has not re replaced Israel. He's never going to replace it, his people. He are, they're his people. But he does have standards, and you're not going to get to God except through Jesus Christ. <laughs> and so, therefore, you, it's, a new, it's a new way of doing things. It's not the old covenant. This is a new covenant. He said, I asked then, did God reject his people? Did God reject his people? By no means. I'm an Israelite. This is Paul's talking. He said, I'm an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people whom he foreknew. Don't you know that scripture says in the passage of Elijah how he Heal to God against Israel and the Lord they and said to him, Lord, they've killed your prophets and they tore down your altars. I, I'm the only one left. I'm trying and they're trying to kill me. And and what was God's answer to him? He said, I have reserved for myself seven thousand who have not bowed the knee to Baal. So so too, at the present time there is a remnant chosen by grace. Grace, unmerited favor. Something none of us deserve. But only God can give grace. I have reserved for myself 7,000. So too, that present time, there's a remnant chosen by grace. And if by grace, then it cannot be based on works. If it, is, if it were, then grace would no longer be grace. <laughs> well, that makes sense, doesn't it? What then? What the people of Israel ought to earnestly uh, obtain. The elect 
among them did, but the others were hardened as it was written. God gave them over. God gave them over to a spirit of stupor, eyes that couldn't see, ears that couldn't hear, and, uh, and uh, not even to this day. And David said, May their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block, a retribution. May their eyes be darkened so they can't see and their backs be bent forever. Hmm. Again, I said, did they stumble so to fall with beyond recovery? Okay, okay, is it beyond? Okay, you made them stumble, but is that beyond recovery? No, he says, no, no, not at all. Rather, because of their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make his, to make Israel envious. We're supposed to be making Israel. <laughs> Jewish people that are loving God, loving God, waiting for their Messiah, but they missed Jesus. They didn't recognize him as the Messiah. They, there's going to be coming one one of these days that's going to come in his own name. They're going to believe he is the Messiah. They, and Jesus said, I came into my own, my own, my own received me not. But said he, there's, there's one going to come in his own name. They're going to receive him. It's pathetic. But so he did this. He did this. He hardened their heart so that salvation can come to the Gentiles, that's us, to make Israel envious. But if our transgression means riches for the world and their loss means riches for the Gentiles, how much greater riches will their full inclusion bring? In other words, when he brings them back, when he opens up those eyes and opens up those ears and opens up their heart that they will believe and receive and say oh my lord my god oh the, it's going to be a great day i i'm talking to you gentiles and as and as much he said he said i'm an apostle to the gentiles i take pride in my ministry of the hope that i may somehow arouse my own people to envy and have and, and save some of them for if their rejection brought reconciliation to the whole world what will acceptance be but life from the dead? Now, if the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. If the root is holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches have been broken off, and you now, this is us, being a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive tree, the olive root, do not consider yourself. This is an admonition. Do not consider yourself to be superior to those whose branch, to those other branches. If you do consider this, you do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. Granted, yes, true. But they were broken off because of unbelief. And you stand by faith. Faith in Jesus. Do not be arrogant, but tremble. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. So people that are prideful and say, you know, hey, they just, God just did away with them and, you know, it's over for them. No, that's not going to happen. Some, some people, some Jewish people are definitely going to be saved. They're going to look at him, who they pierced, and they're going to say, my Lord, my God, and they're going to receive him. That's what it is. Faith is receiving, believing, and accepting. Consider, therefore, the... I love this. It's really awesome. This is an awesome scripture. Consider, therefore, the kindness and the sternness of God. Sternness, sternness to those who fail, but kindness to you, provided that you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you also will be a cut off uh oh wait a minute the stern the goodness and the in the in the king james version says and the severity of god the severity oh boy otherwise you will be cut off and if they do not persist in unbelief they will be grafted back in for God is able to graft them in again after all if they were cut out of the olive tree that is wild by nature and contrary to nature, were grafted into a cult cultivated olive tree, how much more readily will these, the natural branches, be grafted into the olive tree? I don't want you to be ignorant, he says, of this mystery, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be conceited. 
Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. In this way, all Israel will be saved. It is written, the deliverer will come from Zion. He will turn godliness away from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them when I will take away their sins. As far as the gospel is concerned, they are enemies for your sake. But as far as election is concerned, they, they are loved on account of the patriarchs, patriarchs. For God's gifts and his callings are irrevocable. Just as you who were at the time disobedient to God have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience, as they too have now become disobedient in order that you may receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. But God has bound everyone over to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. This is, I'm on, this is, this is where I'm going to close, but this is so beautiful. Think about it. Think about this. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his paths beyond finding out. Who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God and God should not repay? For from him and through him are all things to him be glory forever. I'm going to stop right there. That was Romans 11. Excuse me for my hood around. I'm in a rolling chair. I don't want it to roll out from under me here. I mean, I might, I might be a, an instant holy roller because <laughs> I'm in a rolling chair. <laughs> and it was just about to turn me loose. <laughs> but anyway, the Holy Bible. You can trust the Word. The Word doesn't return void. It will accomplish what God wants. And I, I, I don't know why the Lord was gracious enough. I mean, he was just merciful. I feel to me that, the, I mean, I was raised in a Christian family. We went to church all the time. But I was very disobedient to the ways of God and a backslider. I got saved at 12, but I, I was, I mean, I, I, just, I was, I was, I was rebellious in my heart. And I didn't read the Bible or anything. But I do have a love and respect for the Word of God. And the Word of God is truth. It's powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the joints and the moral, the soul and the spirit, it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God knows what he's doing. He's in control. He did not cast away his people. He, hard, he did hard their hearts. But it's for a time for the Gentiles to come in. The Gentiles are coming in, and people are getting saved. And if you'll just notice, you'll start hearing some very strange people that you would never have thought would be talking about Jesus, and they're talking about Jesus. All of a sudden, they're believing, and you know revival is coming. I, I actually did not think that it was going to come. I thought, no, I don't think I couldn't see how, even though I was hearing about revivals here and there, I didn't know that. But it's the Spirit of the Lord and is, uh, is opening up hearts and eyes. And the times of the Gentiles are being fulfilled. And, and listen, Israel, they're going to be, many of them are going to say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they're going to accept that Jesus is indeed the Messiah. And some will be looking for the false Messiah, like so many people. And uh, so, oh, I won't get into, I won't get into prophecy or anything right now, or end time prophecy. I'm just going to tell you this. We could, everyone drop dead today, or somebody could throw a bomb on, uh, on us in our little area of the world. And we could be blown to smithereens. And it could be, all be over. The other day I had a gas leak outside. I called the the gas company. I was complaining really because I had a bill that was three hundred and something dollars more than it normally is. Well, I just and so I complained. You know, I complained. And she said, "Well, we'll send somebody out to reread the meter." And I said, "Well, it seems like I can smell a little bit of gas, but I've smelled it for a long time and nobody else does." Say, God, he said, my sheep hear my voice. I mean, I was, I, 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 I knew that there was something, but nobody else could smell it. So I'm like, okay, I, get, 
okay. Hope I don't blow up. <laughs> anyway, the guy came out. He checked it and everything. He said, no, he didn't see anything wrong with it. He didn't smell anything. A little while, wasn't too long. I saw another little truck pulled up and a friend, I guess, got out and they were chatting and, and he and he asked him if he could smell anything. And, and then he said, well, you know, I think I do smell gas. So they got to digging around down in there, and and sure enough, there was gas, gas leak right there, under, right beside my house, right beside my house. So they had to, so it, so at first he was just going to close it off and and see it. That's the way the Lord's done. He's just let time go by and pe give people opportunity to get things done. I've had all this time that I've smelled gas leak. I I've really and truly for several years, but I didn't know what to do because nobody else could smell it. But I'm saying to you, get ready, get ready, because the Lord is coming back, and He's He's, he's coming for His church and without those that are looking for His appearance. It's it's a good thing. It's a wonderful thing to to be open to the ways of God, not be embarrassed or shamed. And uh, anyway, he called his boss, and first, like I said, they're gonna leave it for 30 days and tie it down, and then, you know, and he said it would be fine. But then he came and knocked on the door, and he said, you know, my boss said, just go ahead, I'm gonna send a, a crew out, and uh, let's get it done, let's get it fixed. So he had a feeling, he had a feeling. And sure enough, here they came out, and it was, it's an old thing, this house is 100 years old, that I live and this is my home. I love it. But uh, they dug trenches and holes and in my yard and everything, and they cleaned it up best they could. But they put a brand new uh, system in there, you know, and and pipes underneath. And they said it was the old ones. You know, it's a like hundred years old. What can I say? But you know, you, we think oh, if there's a there's a scripture somewhere in the Bible that and it says people will say oh. People's been saying that Jesus is coming back for all this time, and they're, they're going to be scoffers. They're scoffers, actually. They're going to scoff. They're going to be, ugh, oh, he's not coming back. And you know what? In a time when you're not even thinking about it, the Lord's coming back. But he could come back and take you just home, just, just get, leave this world. If you're not prepared, if you're not prepared to meet the Lord, it's no good. I'm 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 uh, I'm very interested, and I, like I say, I don't know why God gave me a burden and a love for Israel from the time I got right with God. That's where I was going a little bit ago. I get sidetracked, but uh, but He did, and I think that I am in in a essence, in a way, a watchman on the wall, and I'm crying out, and I'm saying, what what wait, look out, wait wait. You know the Lord is he is he is coming back and he loves people and don't don't blame Jewish people for things that done to Jesus or things done to your business or this or that you think well they make all that money and all this stuff. listen they, God has given they they've struggled for everything they've got and you may be struggling for everything you got so I'm not trying to say anything except that the Lord put certain people on our heart and the Lord put them on my heart and I pray for them every day every every day I do I have for years I've gone to Israel four times and visited and walked the streets I've prayed at the at the Whaley wall and put my prayers in the wall many times a friend just went this this week Charles Lynn I I've sent a little note. I said, would you be sure and pray for me while you're over there? He said, I, I sure will. Well, you know what? This, it's okay. Be yourself and don't you, you don't have to apologize for how you believe or, or anything. But keep it straight with the Word. Get into the Word of God and study the Word. Study to make yourself approved. The Bible says a workman who needs not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the Word of Truth. If you don't know the Lord Jesus and the Lord should call you home today or something catastrophic happened in America or wherever you're at, whatever part of the world that you might be watching this, I would just say to you, get right with God and do it now. Don't put off till tomorrow. Don't be like that king that when when Paul was trying to talk to him and tell him about all Jesus has done, he said, you almost persuade me. Oh, talk about heart-wrenching. Paul, you almost persuade me to be a Christian. 
almost. Paul said, I'd rather not almost, but that you would be. Almost, friend, is not good enough. No. It's just like that gas leak. For some reason, the person who was over every all of the others, the, he said, just put in a new one. They don't do that lightly. They don't do that for just no reason. He may have just had a thought. You know what? That leak may have been bad, big enough and bad enough. Let's just take care of it and we won't have to worry about her blowing up and blowing up the neighborhood. <laughs> ah, I tell you, God is good. He's watching over us. He keeps his angels around us. Would you like to pray with me? And let's just say a prayer together. You could ask Jesus to come into your heart. Let's do that now. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior and my only hope of a home in heaven. Wash me, fill me, renew me, save my soul. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Teach me how to hear and open my eyes that I can see and take away my hard heart and give me that tender, gentle heart, soft heart. Help me to love people, all people, all people, all races, no matter what they've done or where they've been, to at least know that God's creations, we He, he decides, he, he makes the final decision where people go, but it's based on their faith in God. So we don't know if that last breath, if they, they took that, it don't take but a second to, you know, if you've ever had a dream, I'll just say this in the middle of this prayer. If you've ever had a dream, you can have like something that feels like a length of a full length movie, <laughs> double drama series, <laughs> and it just wouldn't even be a minute or two you fell asleep. A lot can happen before your eyes. Get right with God. Come into our heart, Lord. Forgive our sins. Not by works, but by your grace, your love. In Jesus' name, I come to you and help me now to walk it out and serve you and tell others. Be baptized, walk with you. Get in the Word. Tell somebody that you love you love them, you love Jesus, and you're changed. And you know what? He will change you. You want to be changed? He will change you. He's not going to leave you hanging. If you're sincere, trust me, he's just waiting. He said, call on me while I'm near. Call upon me. Mm -hmm. Again, my name is Jackie Hall, and I'm here in Sherman, Texas. The ministry is Whosoever Will Outreach Ministries. Whosoever Will Outreach Ministries. Post Office Box 57, Sherman, Texas, 75091. And you can go to the website, whosoever will, outreachministries.org, O-R-G, or JackieHollandMinistries.com. <laughs> you know, you don't have to even let me know, but tell somebody. It'll make all the difference. It makes you stronger. It makes you stronger. But don't hate people and don't get caught up in this fighting one amongst each other. Just say, you know what? God is the judge. He will make the decision. The Lord said, it's he that raises people up, and it is he who will take them down. And he will call us home. He said, the number of your hairs are head, of your head are, are numbered. The numbers are, yeah. Can you imagine? God is good. He loves you. I love you too. Have a good day.